Clayton, I'm very happy to have you on the call, uh, um, ready to, um, to answer questions that uh, we got from, from users of the product. We see great results of the, the root product, but of course there's always people uh, who have questions and want to know more. Now, what is the, for you, the main, um, the main uh, area of activity uh, of Clean Slate? You know, it, it's interesting when we say, when we look at the depth of Clean Slate, the primary, I guess you could argue, the primary mechanism is the, is the support and assistance of systemic detoxification. Mm -hmm. And what, what Clean Slate is doing in that is unlike anything else that's ever been on the market before. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been fortunate for the last 18 years to be in and around, you know, what many people will call the zeolite space, but having an expertise and you know, really um, in-depth understanding of the powers of clinoptilolite and what its capabilities are. But when, when you put something like this amazing crystal in the hands of a biotech savant that's done bioscience engineering that understands nanotechnology at a level of which very few do in the world, what she's, what she's been able to do is unlike what it's ever been done before. And that's actually why we were put together uh, with my journey and her journey to allow this to take place. So you can, you can say that the first foundational component of what Clean Slate does is systemic detoxification. Yes. But what that systemic detoxification means is it's quite vast because it's not just the removal of heavy metals. It's not, you know, it's it's creating the foundation for the activation of the glymphatic system. Mm -hmm. It's it's the decalcification of the of the pineal gland. But as we as we get into deeper understanding of the pineal gland, just the decalcification of the pineal gland is only one piece of the puzzle. And and that's really, really what makes Clean Slate so special is you have all these detoxification benefits from its ability to act as a molecular sieve, um, its, its mechanisms for grabbing onto and binding, you know, the other toxic heavy metals and um, the PFAS that are so popular now and glyphosate and mold spores and biotoxins and graphene and viral fragments and some people will call those spike proteins. But that the, all what you're calling now is uh, clean slate is capable of capturing and taking out of the body. Yes, yeah, it does. It does all of that, but simultaneously, it's delivering the the key component that we need to improve our overall function, which is bioavailable silica. Yeah. Right, and and. And in addition to that, the key trace minerals we need from the sources that our body resonates most with, which is sea salt. Yeah, and that's and, why you combined actually the sea salt with the clean of the, it's not clean of anymore. It's uh, the modified clean of Yeah, you, what, what we're doing is we're taking the purest form of clinoptilolite that we've been able to find, which is 97% pure clino and 3% bentonite. Um, and it consists of 66.7% silica. And that's really important because it's the silica to aluminum ratio in clinoptilolite that, that makes it um, active, right? Higher, the higher the silica concentration, the more active the, the crystal is in its ability to bind toxins. Mm -hmm. So with that, but also understanding that if you are doing true systemic detoxification, if you're able to start removing mercury, lead, aluminum, cadmium, arsenic, you know, cesium, strontium, gadolinium, you know, these other, these other toxic metals, and they, these metals are hormone mimetic, mm -hmm. they, they're mineral mimetic, so they're blocking all these binding sites. So when you look at the mineral mimetic aspects, you, know, you, you not only have to remove what's blocking those binding sites, but you simultaneously have to deliver the trace minerals that need to get to those binding sites so you prevent mineral gapping. Mm -hmm. No one's done this before. Okay. And, and this, is, 
this is one of the primary reasons that we're seeing such amazing outcomes as far as systemic detoxification, because Clean Slate's working on all of the pathways. It's not just, oh, well, we're able to remove a couple things. It's assisting in every aspect of it. So while you might, some people might say, oh, well, I take zeolites or I've taken zeolites before, or I've taken clinoptilolite. Yeah, and really yeah, and it's like, yeah, you have. And many people have driven a car before, but they haven't driven a Bugatti. That's true. Or you haven't, dri you haven't driven a car that, an electric car that can go zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds. Mm -hmm. But you've driven a car. Does that mean you're driving something that's equivalent? Or does it mean that there are, there are products or services out there there's that perform better than you're used to? Yeah. This is this is the difference as a as a Corvette drives really past by me. <laughs> yeah, so, so there is there is definitely a, a difference in quality. Um, now uh, there are people that are worried about oh uh, there are there is aluminum in this molecule isn't that a toxic and isn't that dangerous but that's another kind of aluminum right? Free aluminum free aluminum is a problem, but the aluminum that makes up the, the structure of clinoptilolite is not bioavailable, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's a lot like looking at water and going, wait a minute, hydrogen is highly combustible. And if you, if you put it in a, in a warmer, in a hot environment, it could cause a chemical reaction where the, uh, where the hydrogen mm -hmm. could, could actually ignite and explode. Yet the human body and the planet may, are made up of 70% water, which is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. And both of those are highly unstable. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, you have to understand the chemical makeup and the chemical structure of what makes those, what makes those bonds you know, so strong. But the, the other important part is understanding that the sourcing of the clinoptilolite that you start with is so important because Clinoptilolite is a natural molecular sieve, and it's it's what binds toxins out of the environment naturally. So you want to be able to start with a raw ingredient that is as clean as possible, but in the process that you're doing, you want to clean it out. Yeah. So we we make sure that we're able to flush out all of the the free aluminum, the aluminum that it that the cages would have absorbed in the environment that would be of concern. Yes. And we do analysis on that. We do heavy metal analysis. We do, we do all of that with every batch. We've got all the raw, the raw data to make sure that we're sourcing the, the best clinoptilolite possible. So not a problem, never been a problem. And if, if it was an issue, we wouldn't be getting the outcomes that we're getting clinically, like you're talking about, as people are seeing the outcomes. Now, there are there are multi-level marketing companies that there's one that sells a synthetic aluminosilicate. And because it's a synthetic, the stomach mm -hmm. acid actually causes the breaking of the bonds of, of the silica or of the, the sodium and aluminum. And they actually poison a lot of people with aluminum because the synthetic isn't, isn't strong enough in, in acid to keep the bones its structure and it's a bit. Okay, the connection was a little bit off, but uh, now, so the, the synthetic one is actually unhealthy, while well, this is a completely natural product, a uh, natural process that is used to make it function better. Now, yes. I, have, I have seen people that react uh, with one drop um, and, and, and yeah, get a migraine uh, after it tried a few times and ever so then I made them start with one drop in a liter of water and space it out throughout a couple of days sometimes but then other people they take it and they tell me after three months I don't really feel a difference uh, what uh, what would you answer to that one how amazing is it that one drop can throw people for a loop mm -hmm. uh, hydration hydration is the key mm -hmm. but the other, the other part of passive detoxification is really the crucial part. If, if it's doing its thing and you're hydrated and such, you won't feel anything. Your body's just going to do what it does, yeah. right? You, un, unless you're putting a real focus on the work, you don't feel respiration either. No. You breathe, though. 
Well, I told yes, them if they go to McDonald's and they have a burger, they also don't feel that it's actually bad for them. Yeah. Even if they do well, it on a regular basis, they don't really feel it quickly. Yes. Yeah. Now, using, using a product like Clean Slate, uh, I see it as uh, a daily uh, cleansing from the inside. And like if people, people brush their teeth on a daily basis, twice a day, preferable. Uh, so I think clean slate should be used like that. Uh, as long as we live, uh, just use it to clean uh, all the toxicity that we get every day from the environment, from the food, from the water we drink. Um, is that correct in your opinion, or should we pause some, uh, sometimes? No, you know it doesn't. It doesn't hurt to pause, but you you hit on the the key part that this is something that needs to be continual, and. And I can tell you that I pause either due to my travel schedule or lifestyle, but I've also been doing this for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And so once you've got a couple of years under your belt and you've really cleaned yourself up a bit, then you could say, oh, you know, I can do this. I can do that. Take a couple of days off here or try this or try that. Um, one of the more important parts is not just the, the daily routine, but it's it's the support of the circadian rhythm and mm -hmm. and the support of of pineal function and and the body's overall support on a daily basis. And if you if you remove the the detoxification benefits which are which are so beneficial from what clean slate does and you just look at the the benefits of getting the trace minerals the key trace minerals and the bioavailable silica delivered in a manner that is the most efficient I've ever seen with the right types and the right bioavailability and the most elite delivery mechanism that's ever been put on the market, um, that alone is reason to keep using it. The detox benefits are then a secondary, a secondary benefit that are just absolutely a massive on their own. Yeah. Um, what is actually the, the difference in your opinion uh, between uh, clean, uh, clean slate and uh, the regular um, liquid uh, silica products that are on the market? Because there, people need to drink like five to 10 milliliters twice a day to get the effects. That's the difference. But can you explain more scientifically? So part, part of it is source, right? Because the most, and, and the scientific community has been trying to do this for 30 years, but they haven't been able to do it. And, it, and it's the part that Dr. Rahm has done that we, we haven't come out and done presentations to you know, the, the PhD scientific community yet. But clinoptilolite happens to be nature's best and most abundant source of bioavailable silica. It is the best source to get this type of silica. Not, not all silica is, is of the ideal variety. Just like all vitam vitamin C is not the same, the majority of vitamin C on the market is loaded with heavy metals. So you, you, have, to get, you have to get the right quality. But we're not a physical mechanism, mm -hmm. right? And this is, this is where the, the truth of, of the real science behind Clean Slate comes in. It's, it's the frequency aspect. It's the energetics, the polarization that amplify the body's synthesis of what you're giving it. Because metabolically, our body energetically is, is able to synthesize and metabolize what we're giving it based on the energy signature, mm -hmm. right? We, we know that with Emoto's work with how, how different things can restructure water. Well, if, if that's the, the truth and that's the case, which we know it is, if you have products that can restructure water on the outside, they're also doing it on the inside, but that's not being done because you're actually using a physical mechanism. That's a frequency base. Mm -hmm. So what, what Dr. Rahm has done has activated the silica in a manner that is, is making it truly bioavailable, mm -hmm. but not, not the physical aspect. And that's why, that's why you, see, you can look at it like being dead versus being alive, right? Most, most supplements on the market are dead, mm -hmm. right? They, they have really good marketing. They, they will talk about the ingredients, but it's not alive. From, from 
the energy perspective mm-hmm. and the intention, right? Mm-hmm. And all of all of that is is in the not just clean slate, but all of the products mm-hmm. intentionally. So that has not not only something to do with the polarization that is used for clean slate. Um, that's that's more the the combination of the products and how it's uh, yeah put together. Yes. Yeah. Now there was a question about the polarization. Uh, uh, about like, okay, we have different polarization uh, on both sides of the equator. Uh, what about shipping and going through radiation machines, etc.? cetera? All these things that, that have an effect on the product? Haven't seen, haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, the, only, the only thing that would, that would really do it is if you, ran, if you ran the products through some really strong magnets again. Mm-hmm. You know, so the polarization process, when you look at the poles and the mag- magnetism of the earth and things traveling, it's very, very light compared to what we're doing. So you can think of it like a wall magnet mm-hmm. or a refrigerator magnet versus rare earth magnets and how strong the polarity and the strength is of the of the rare earth magnet. When we're creating the products, we're using rare earth magnetism, not um, refrigerator magnetism i hope so yeah so yeah yeah. yeah. so travel travel and such is not going to affect it very much Mm -hmm. if at all and radiation radiation and such doesn't affect it doesn't affect it can you explain a bit more on the effect of the clean octillerite on the pineal gland yeah so one one we know clean octillerite is really good at removing fluoride Mm -hmm. right so that's that's the key component from the outside but when we get into the understanding of the pineal gland, we know that inside the pineal gland are a bunch of little crystalline oscillators, mm-hmm. right? So we got all these all these little crystals that are inside the light center of the brain because it's the crystals that resonate with light. And what what we're seeing is one, clinoptilolite is a crystal, mm-hmm. but two, because of the bioavailable silica, the bioavailable silica is getting inside the inside the pineal gland and helping to re- recrystallize mm-hmm. the pineal gland. Because through time and through toxicity, a lot of those crystals are damaged, right? So it doesn't your pineal glands, even if you decalcify it, it's still not working as well as it could. Um, but through the recrystallization, with the addition of the, um, the silica, you mm-hmm. see it becoming more resonant. Mm-hmm. And it becomes stronger, and then you get better outcomes. Doing well, but the the important part when we look at what Clean Slate is doing for the pineal gland includes restore and zero in. Yeah. Right. Because these are these are the components of the of the pineal gland that you you can't forget. People think the pineal gland is like this master, not understanding that the body itself is all connected. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's like a mobile mm-hmm. that you can't just tug on the pineal gland and go, oh, I'm going to take care of everything because I'm f- focused on this. No, you, your yes. gut we'll is, is directly connected to everything through your vagus nerve and your heart's in the middle of that. You have to address all of those. You got to take care of the biome, the microbiome, the virome in your gut, kill off a bunch of the fungus, reduce the inflammation, bring that leaky gut back together. That's and once you're doing that, comes in. And that's and that's for stores mechanism. And once you do that, and you can do this all simultaneously, which is the fun part. Once you've got that environment and you've got a clean slate, that's also removing a lot of the toxicity from your vagus nerve, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the blockages and the disruption in the communication pathway start to improve. But then you need the primary communicators, and that's the neurotransmitters, that's dopamine and serotonin. Mm-hmm. And then you get to have fun with zero in. And why is zero in so important? Well, dopamine and serotonin are produced in the gut. Zero in creates the mechanism for your brain or your intention to tell your gut what it wants more of. So it's endogenously produced. With endogenous production of dopamine and serotonin, you become unstoppable if you so choose. But the mechanism will will work differently at different times of the day. So the pineal gland controls your circadian rhythm. Yeah. That's important in your sleep and wake cycle. What's most important is the sleep cycle. Have a good day, Thank you. So if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not getting into deep 
REM sleep. Your lymphatic system doesn't work, which means you can't detoxify your brain. Mm -hmm. There's not people. People want to talk about the the blood brain barrier, like it's the it's the main piece of the equation. It's not. It's just been the first part that we understood. We didn't start to understand the glymphatic system until about eight years ago. That's true. But with the activation of the glymphatic system coming from deep REM sleep, the question goes, okay, how do we get more deep REM sleep? Well, you, you have to not take more melatonin supplements because that's going to shut off your pineal glands production of melatonin. melatonin. What you have to do is Exactly. So you have to clean it up. You have to recrystallize it. You got to connect the gut. You got to start producing more dopamine and serotonin. So at night, when it's your intention to go to sleep, you get more serotonin. The serotonin goes to your pineal gland and actually converts to melatonin. And then when you have extra serotonin, it will convert to endogenous DMT, which allows you to get into deep REM sleep and you dream. And we've seen this with heart rate variability analysis. I've had friends do it that use different different watches and bands and rings for tracking tracking their heart rate variability and their sleep patterns and they've been using the trinity for a while and i actually had them take one one capsule zero in before bed and in two nights one of my buddies had a 12 percent improvement in night one and an additional 13 percent in night two so a 25 percent total improvement in deep rem and sleep in, in 48 hours and when you do that, that's when you have the activation of the glymphatic system and clean slate gets into lymph and gets into your glymph and helps wash your brain at night, clean it out. And you're doing that nightly. Yeah. That's why you want to keep doing this every day. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's good that, that you touch on taking the zero in at night because we're used to prescribe it like one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And a lot of people are afraid to take it in the evening because there is some ca caffeine in it. Can you explain why that's not a problem? There is anhydrous caffeine, so that it's a different mechanism. It's a different. It's a different chemical, actually, mm -hmm. right? And it's really important to understand that. It, it's like, well, you could drink milk, or you could drink chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. They're different, they right? Different. While they might be milk, one mm -hmm. with chocolate is a little bit different. It tastes better, and it's outstanding. <laughs> But the, the key is understanding the mechanism. And we've seen this with the heart rate variability analysis. People think that, that caffeine is a stimulant, and it is. But in its different versions, it can be used as, as a stimulant in different approaches. Mm -hmm. So anhydrous caffeine is a dopamine agonist. Okay. And it's, it's very unique because you can think of it as a stimulant as a stimulant, but what it's doing is it's stimulating the chemical reaction of dopamine or serotonin production. Yeah. And what we've seen with the heart rate variability analysis done by Dr. Stefan Rao a couple of years ago, something that's really unique. That mm -hmm. When you take two, two capsules of zero in and some clean slate, and you can do it with Restore as well, because we've got data on both, you don't see any change in heart rate. What you see is a tremendous shift in heart rate variability and actually a calming of your autonomic nervous system, a calming of your mind, and you become more focused, more relaxed. And if you calm your autonomic nervous system, you become more restful and you're actually more efficient at sleeping. So the science and the outcomes show what the truth is mm -hmm. and we we don't have to speculate because we already have the data yeah well i see that a lot of people when they're on the trinity report that they sleep better and that they start dreaming again which they haven't done sometimes for years so that's also a good uh, good effect of about uh, how the brain uh, functions now, what about people that are uh, on antidepressants like Mao inhibitors? Can they take the products safely or uh, should they um, yeah, first uh, get off the, the, the medication, which is not easy, of course? Well, you can't, you know, it, it, it's the interesting part of the equation, the equation, right? It's like Occam's razor. Right? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, do you, 
do you do you cut do you cut the poison before you feel the pain are you trying to find the solution you know before you have the problem or is the problem always going to keep up with the solution mm-hmm. and you know they they say that you know when when addressing the the problem the simplest answer is usually the the correct one well that means in order to address a problem you have to understand the cause You don't look at the treatment. You don't try to treat the treatment. You don't try to treat the symptoms. You address the cause. So in in so addressing the cause, you're going to start to make changes because a healthy body is not going to have health problems. That's true. So if you're doing that, if you have someone with, and I'll say all psychological issues, Mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, um, um, burnout but you can get into bipolar schizophrenia mm-hmm. which are the two big ones when when you're dealing with these issues uh, in in nearly every instance those those people are under the care of a healthcare professional yes mostly and if you want to make sure that you're doing best by every person possible every person that is managing some of those symptoms needs to manage it with their healthcare professional mm-hmm. Be- because of this it's not the direct interaction that clean slate zero and restore relive will have with the medication it's and it is primarily what clean slate does with the cleansing of the system and in, in its effect one your metabolism improves mm-hmm. right so if your metabolism improves that means your pharmacological metabolism is going to improve which is a great thing because then you don't need as much of the drugs to get the same no effect yeah. you you can do that but then something unique happens that over a little bit of time that reduction of dosage goes to zero mm-hmm. because they don't need it anymore yeah. Uh, but it is it is a process that can be done as slowly as you need and as slowly as you desire that is completely controllable on both sides. It can be controlled by the practitioner. It can be controlled by the patient. Because he feels the difference. He starts yes. feeling. Yeah. You know, so it allows it allows the opportunity to be successful on on all aspects, but it is something that needs to be communicated and and you know, all, all kinds of care should be collaborative, right? Mm-hmm. And you know this from being a healthcare professional, that people people need to work closely with their healthcare provider. Yeah. And yeah, we just support that process. It's always a, yeah, a co-working uh, activity. Now, um, you, you were talking about the, nerve, the, the vagus nerve. Um, I know from, uh, from Parkinson patients, uh, in the research there, they've seen the a big uh, the importance of actually uh, communication between uh, bacteria from the from the ileocecal uh, to to the brain, um, which um, yeah can be responsible also for what's starting the the Parkinson problem. Mm-hmm. Now, um, how how is the effect of uh, clean slate and and zero in on on Parkinson patients? Do we have any research or uh, experience with that? We, we've we seen a bunch of data. I think uh, we've had a few case studies submitted in, uh, in the International Science Nutrition Society. And I, I can tell you what I've seen, you know, because usually you have patients like this that okay. will, yeah. and it, it's really interesting because after a little bit of time, they do that. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a really interesting case because I I had uh, one of our one of actually our friends here brought a one of the most prominent doctors uh, into the into the office with us. And this was last year. He's been in practice for probably forty years. He's in his seventies. Um, very well known for his work in a couple different areas. And as we're sitting down on the couch in the office talking, I can see his hand doing this. Mm-hmm. I said, Doc, let me ask you a question. How long have you had that tremor? He's like, ever really? since I was ever since I was a kid. Ooh. I'm like, really? He said, it's something I've dealt with ever since I was like 12 years old. And you know, I've just learned to manage it. I'm like, really? Where'd you grow up? It's like Baltimore. I'm like, oh, you're lead poisoned. 
because it's known that there's massive amounts of lead in the air of the water and the soil in Baltimore, Maryland. And then interesting, I said, can you, uh, and, and we know what clean slate does, but what we also know is that restore has the ability to calm the, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Hey, can you do something for me? He's like, sure. I'm like, I'll be right back. So I went to my office and grabbed a sachet of Restore. I'm like, I want you to try this for me real quick. So this is part of the Trinity. This is what we're going over. Mm -hmm. I just want you to take it. So I had him take it and he's like, this tastes pretty good. I'm like, yeah, it, it yes. is good. So we were talking and after, after about five minutes, the, the friend that was with him, I looked over at her and I was like, you see his hand? Because his hands weren't shaking. They, they were in his lap and he was calm. And we were still talking. He didn't even know what happened. Yeah. Um, but so we, we had the conversation. We were having this conversation. I stopped him. I'm like, hey, doc, I want you to look at something. How are your hands doing? And he looked down. And the coolest thing happened. He, he lifted his hand. And he's like, wait a minute. And then he started to think about it. And, it started. and his hand started to tremor again. Yeah. I'm like. And then when he, he, he put his hands down again, we started talking and he stopped tremoring. Mm -hmm. So you, you have the, the communication pathways and the intention, right, of a lot of what we understand as far as chronic illness is actually the brain telling you that you're sick. Yeah. And, and, his, and his, the, yeah, and his brain was so, his hands, he, used his, he was used to see his hands with a tremor. So not being in a tremor was... Yeah, for him yeah. impossible almost. Yeah, but with only with one dosage of restore, you saw that result. Yeah. Yeah. So with with continual with continual use of of like clean slate, zero in and restore. And this was actually one of the one of the questions we got from. I actually got it from the Canadian government when we were getting zero in registered mm -hmm. uh, because of because of the ingredients and the quality of the ingredients and the quantity of the ingredients that make up the stack in zero in the, the Canadian um, government came back to us one and they, they asked a couple questions They're like, um, why, why did you guys do this? And we've never seen a product that has this level or this quality of ingredients. And we had to tell them because it works. <laughs> yes. And, and then they, they asked an interesting question. They're like, you know, this can treat Parkinson's, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, yeah, but it's not a drug. So we're not talking about that. But they're like, no, the amount of dopaminergics in this would actually be used to treat Parkinsonism. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, we know that, but we're not going to talk about it. You know, because one of the primary treatments for Parkinson's is L-DOPA. Yes. Mucunopurians, just mucunopurians mm -hmm. is a primary, is a primary, you know, dopamine agonist which has been very well researched for its ability to produce dopamine yeah, yeah. and l-dopa so you go well wait a minute that's important but when you understand the the aspects of of uh, of parkinson's and it's in its link to mercury toxicity and aluminum toxicity in the brain and you go okay so we've got that we've got the dopamine pathways we've got the ability to clean up the the vagus nerve yes, yeah. and we're taking care of the gut which where a lot of that disruption and bacteria takes place you go ah maybe just maybe we have an idea here because it's not about it's not about treating a symptom it's about treating the body and giving the body what it needs to do what we're innately made to do which is be outstanding yeah, yeah. that's great now i have a question still one question on on um, on clean slate just uh, I have a, a friend who's uh, yeah starting to get uh, dementia. Um, he's quite stubborn. He's a scientist. Uh, he's, he's always been uh, with science and organizing conferences, etc. Um, now uh, his partner tells me that uh, every time he gets a viral infection, he's sick. He gets yeah definitely a lot worse. So then then it's like he gets a, a hit and. And in the beginning, it felt like it was coming back after a few days to a few weeks. And now she has a feeling like, yeah, 
he, he gets a hit and it's never coming back to the state he was before. Now, um, I was wondering, uh, because um, coming here also, for example, for ozone treatment, if could I um, give him the clean slate through nasal inhalation, making it come to his uh, yeah, blood brain barrier easier? And could that be a good idea? It's not as, you know, it, it's, it's the interesting aspects of pathways, right, of of how it works you can you can put clean slate in a nebulizer you can you can inhale it you can use it topically you can we are we are making the ctc version available without trace minerals so you can use it as eye drops mm -hmm. um, because it's been done so much and have seen just miraculous outcomes for ocular health um you can play with it in different ways and and work through different pathways um because of because of the mechanisms um crossing the blood brain barrier is like i mentioned initially is always one people want to discuss um because of because of that pathway and its application into the pharmaceutical world it's not one that we talk about much mm -hmm. is there is there the likelihood that some of the crystals are crossing the blood brain barrier and the other side of the equation is if you have a leaky gut, you have a leaky brain. Mm -hmm. So pretty much anything is crossing that barrier for, for most people anyway. Um, so is there is there some point to that? Yes. The bigger point is the activation of the glymphatic system and what happens at night, because that's when you detoxify your brain. Mm -hmm. um, the inhalation is probably, you know, going to do some other... I, you know, I'm trying to think of how many people I've had use it as as nasal drops and such. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see some different results. Mm -hmm. um, you, you might see some interesting things come out. One of the one of the unique things I've seen from the past um, was people that had different different histories of chemical use. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend a friend of mine that used a lot of cocaine when she was younger, and doing it orally, just oral use within a couple of days had a massive, massive release of sinus discharge that was all this white milky stuff that flushed out of her sinuses. And she called me, she's like, I don't know what, what's going on. I'm like, and then she told me about her history. I'm like, you just flushed all the cocaine residue out of your sinuses that have been built up in there that your body couldn't get rid of. Mm -hmm. And she'd gone walking down the street like a week later and she called me all freaked out because of something that had happened and I'm like, okay, explain this to me. She's like, well, I was walking down the street and this weird smell came over me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what was it? She's like, I could smell the trees. I couldn't smell, I haven't been able to smell trees in over 20 years. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's because you actually kind of cleaned up your, your olfactory system. So mm -hmm. you can look at it different, different ways and different pathways. And you know, the benefits, it, it's the unique part of working, working with professionals, right? Um, that, you know, professionals have different experience and you can tell your patients, okay, I want you to try this. And now because of what we're starting to do in collaboration with the International Science Nutrition Society, of uh, being able to track all of that data mm -hmm. and track those outcomes and say, okay, if you do this, I saw this. If you, if you did this, I see this. Mm -hmm. And then when I do this and this and this, I get this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Okay, we need to do this and this and this. And that's that's really is really part of the journey of really blending all the science um with with the outcomes, um, but making making sure that the most important part is the safety aspect, that you can't hurt people. Right? We haven't and people have asked me that, like you were asking the question of, oh, well, what about this? It's like, well, we've got about a hundred thousand plus customers and we haven't had a single instance of a negative outcome yet mm -hmm. and if we were doing something wrong we would have had one complaint by now absolutely of course well thank you very much uh, clayton for your good information thank you for your time um and i hope we can talk uh, again soon on the other products okay absolutely and, and the one thing i'll, I'll tell you one I got to thank you for doing everything you're doing because as a practitioner, you're outstanding. But as the caretaker for Roland, <laughs> 
top notch, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the beautiful, the beautiful part as a practitioner is to just do that, keep practicing, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we get to perfect this process. We, we have the understanding of what we're meant to do, but we're, we're learning so much from our community because in, in looking at how how the different products are interacting with different people in different instances and in different circumstances, we're learning about dosage. We're learning about you know, how to how to use things differently. Okay, you know, should we should we use a couple drops in your ears? Should you use some in your nose? Should you inhale it? You know, what do you what do you need to focus on? I think the inhalation aspect is something that hasn't been done much, but from a nebulizer perspective because of the amount of toxicity in our lungs yes it's massive and you've got to detoxify the alveoli in your lungs and every everything else that's there and it's really interesting what kind of things can be removed from your lungs as you start to do that and you'll start hacking up some crazy stuff yeah and i think the combination of the oral and the inhalation can make the effect uh, stronger and as you say yep. we, we keep learning i think i learn more from my patients uh, than I had that you know, from my, my my medical training because yeah people yeah. know their body people yeah can give you real stories and not just the yeah you know, the medical data and, and and what symptom you have and how you treat it yeah you go looking for the cause behind the symptoms and that's yeah that gives me so much more pleasure in my work than just yeah. giving a, a pill for whatever uh, symptom. The greatest, the greatest practitioners in history all learned from their patients. They didn't, they, it, it wasn't what they learned in school. It's what they learned in practice, yeah. right? And, you know, my, my dad taught me that when he started to study Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and, you know, asking the question of the, the Chinese, Chinese herbalist that was teaching him how to, how to do specific protocols. And he asked her, it's like, okay, why do you use these herbs in, in this specific method and in this amount for this use? She's like, because my grandfather's grandfather's grandfather did it that way. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yep, that's science. Because <laughs> if things weren't working, they would change it. And you, you, learn from, you learn from success, you learn from failure, you don't learn from a book. No, that's true. Well. That's a good end. Thank you very much, Clayton. Say hi to Christina and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye. I will do it. Cheers. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.